In this video, we'll learn how to add multiple animations to a sprite object in P5 using the P5 Play library. So I've got an example here in my P5 editor, and I've already gone ahead and coded out the basic interactions that I'd like to fill in with different animations. I have one sprite, and I've set it up to follow the mouse, to stop when it's over the mouse, and when I click the mouse to rotate, I can also adjust the scaling with the up and down arrows on the keyboard. All those behaviors are built into the sprite object that's a part of the P5 Play library. And we also have the option of attaching our own artwork and our own animations to those sprites. Another really important part of the setup that I've done so far is to create an assets folder. And I've gone ahead and loaded in three sets of images that I'll use to make three different animations one for a spinning animation to play when the mouse is clicked, one for an idle animation uh, for when the sprite is standing still, and one for a, a walking or a motion sequence when the sprite is moving side to side. I've also made sure to create a libraries folder, upload the P5 Play library, and link it in my index.html file. So let's go back to sketch.js and get started here. So I've already gone ahead and created a variable to hold my sprite, I'm calling it ghost. And down in setup, I'm using the create sprite function to set that up as a sprite object, give it a width and a height and a location on the screen. What I'd like to do here is to add animations to that sprite. And this is one of the really cool things about the sprite object is it can hold multiple animations and we can switch back and forth between them later on in our code. So right here, I'm just gonna type out that ghost object, then use the dot syntax and the add animation method to give this some different animations. When we're calling this method, our first argument is gonna be the name of the animation. So this first one I'll call floating, and then we're gonna load in the images or the sequence of images that we'd like to use for this animation. So if we have a numbered sequence we can simply specify the beginning and the end of that sequence and the add animation method will pull in all the images in between. So here uh, I'll reference the folder that we're pulling our images from. In my case, that's called assets. And then my first frame. And then the last frame, which in my case is number seven. And I can see already uh, that floating animation has been attached to my sprite. So let's add a couple more animations here. So we'll do one for when it's moving. And then let's do one more for when it's spinning. So now our sprite has three different animations attached to it. By default, the sprite is just going to play the first animation. So that's why we're seeing that floating animation no matter what we're doing in terms of interaction. So let's jump down into our draw loop. This conditional here is looking at the position of the mouse relative to the sprite. So if the mouse is to the left of the sprite, we'd like the moving animation to play and we'd like that sprite to move to the left. If the mouse is to the right of the sprite, we'd still like that moving animation and we'd like the sprite to move to the right. Now if the mouse is over the sprite, we'd like to play the floating animation like we see now. So let's go ahead and use the change animation method on that ghost object to specify which animation we'd like for which situation. So here in this block, uh, I'd like to say ghost dot change animation. And then in quotes, we just say the name that we'd like to change to. So now you can see we've changed animation uh, again we don't have any place else in the code where we're changing to a different animation, so that's the only one we're gonna see for now. Um, I'm going to copy this line because I'd like it also to be called uh, if the mouse is to the right of the sprite. And then when we get to this block, that's testing for whether the mouse is over the sprite. That's where I wanna call that floating animation. So now you can see if I move the mouse to either side We'll switch to that moving animation, and then when the sprite gets to wherever the mouse happens to be, we'll switch to floating. So the next animation I'd like to add in is uh, the one that happens when the mouse is being clicked or held down, uh, and that is one that looks like the ghost is spinning. So here, uh, that block is handling that interaction. So let's say ghost, change animation, and we want the spinning one.
Now, one thing I'm noticing here uh, in terms of my interaction, my sprite images are different sizes, and uh, I'm getting a little bit of a height disparity when I switch from the floating animation to the moving animation. So I'd want to make some adjustments to the vertical offset of this specific animation, and I can access that by storing it in a variable when I add it to the ghost object. So when we call that ghost.addAnimation, we're really doing two things. We're adding the animation to the object, and we're also returning the animation as an object itself that we can then make adjustments to. So we could say something like let ghost float equals ghost.addAnimation. So now we have that floating animation stored in this variable, and we can use that to make adjustments to the animation rather than the sprite. So I can say ghost float dot off y, so that's the y offset, and let's try something like 20. So now you can see those more or less stay at the same height when we're switching from floating to moving. And you can see if I were to exaggerate that, the difference in height that we get. And maybe that's something we want. In this case, I think I'd like to keep these relatively even. Okay, so that's a quick overview of using sprite objects from the P5 Play library to access different animations in P5.js.